Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. Chances are as you go along in trigonometry you'll come across a few figures that look like this. And usually the goal is to figure out the value of all the missing sides and sometimes even the value of all the missing angles uh, in one of these figures. They tend to be really great problems. Um, uh, instructors like to use them to test out their students on what they know and what they don't know. Uh, but I think I have a few good tips that will make this process go a little bit easier in case you come across a problem that looks like this. So some of the tips that I think are really useful is one, know your special triangles. Uh, by knowing your 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 triangles and how those sides are related, uh, that will usually get your foot in the door for a few of those values. Also, you should know that all angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. This is especially important uh, for finding some of those missing angles along the way. And of course, a really big one is you should never assume the value of an angle or side unless it is clearly marked. Sometimes in these figures or drawings, uh, it can look like you have a right angle, or it could look like uh, with your protractor that maybe something is a 45 degree. Uh, but unless it's marked that way, try not to assume that it actually is one of those angles. Chances are you might be able to find out if it really is a good key value, but you'll have to use some other information first before you can actually make that leap. Uh, now, of course, you might use other things uh, rather than just the special triangles and uh, the fact that they all add up to 180. Uh, you might end up using stuff like the Pythagorean theorem or other trigonometric identities um, when finding the sides. The more information you know, the, the easier this process gets. Uh, but just these first two will probably get you pretty far. So let's go ahead and try a couple of examples of uh, finding the missing values, and you'll see how this you know, plays a part. So for this first one, I have this nice little figure here. I'm looking for the values of A, B, C, and D. Um, and as I'm combing it over, it looks like I have a few angles, not many. I got a 30, I got a 90, and a 60. Well, immediately when I see something like the 30 and the 90, I can think, wait a minute, that other side has to be 60. And of course, I'm making that conclusion because all of the angles have to add up to be 180 degrees. So if 30 degrees is down here and 90 degrees is down here, the only thing left uh, is 60 degrees, which has to be in the other corner. Now that's especially great to know because now I can essentially look at this first large triangle here and say, wait a minute, I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So let's go ahead and use that to figure out some of our values now. Uh, when I think of a 30, 60, 90, I want to think of how the sides are related to one another. And in this case, I'm thinking of the hypotenuse as 2. Uh, the side opposite the 30 degrees is 1. side opposite the 60 is square root of 3. Now, in our triangle, you can clearly see that it does not have a side of 2, but that's okay. We're still going to use this to figure out how much our triangle has been scaled up by. In fact, here's how I'm going to do it. Imagine starting off with this small triangle here with a side length of 2 on the hypotenuse. What would we need to multiply it by in order to get the brand new value over here, 15? So this small equation here, I'm using it to figure out my scaling factor or how much this triangle has grown to create this much larger one. And if we solve for x, we will get that scaling factor. So I'm dividing both sides by 2. I get x is 15 divided by 2, and sure enough, this is what I'm using for my scaling factor now. Now, you may be looking at that and wondering, well, how does that help us? Well, now I can scale up these smaller sides and figure out the values of a and c. Okay, so let's do that one at a time. Let's start off with a. So for a, um, in just a regular old uh, 30, 60, 90, I'd think of its side as the square root of 3. But of course it's being scaled up, so I will multiply it by this scaling fa factor we found earlier. And so its real value is 15 square root of 3, all divided by 2. Let's do the same thing with C. So like before, I want to think of the smaller one. Uh, usually has a side length of 1. But it's been scaled up by 15 divided by 2, so let's multiply that. And I get 15 divided by 2. Not bad. So now we have all of the sides of this large triangle. We have all of the angles. That one's pretty good. Now that we have those sides, let's turn our attention to this other triangle on the right side. If I have a nice straight angle here, that also has to add up to be 180 degrees, which means this other angle is also a 90. 
Well, if that one's 90, the uh, that one's 60, that means in this corner we have a 30 degree angle. So what this really tells us is that we have another 30, 60, 90 triangle hiding in the background. It's just orientated a you know, slightly different way. And this one, 30 is in the top, 60 is over there on the side. And now we can mark out our, our side. So the hypotenuse will always be 2. Uh, the one opposite the smaller angle, there's a 1. Side opposite the larger angle, square root of 3. So it's orientated uh, kind of like this. Now that I have that information, um, and I know the side of C, I can figure out how much this triangle has been scaled up, much like we did before. So originally the side would be like the square root of 3. But it's being multiplied by something, some mystery scaling factor, in order to get this new side C, which we found earlier, was 15 divided by 2. So if we solve this for x, we will have our scaling factor. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to divide both sides by the square root of 3. So 15 all divided by 2 and divided by the square root of 3. Not bad. Let's go ahead and rationalize that denominator so we can see that scaling factor a little bit easier. So 15 square root of 3 all over. 2 times uh, square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. Uh, let's go ahead and cancel some 3's out. So I'll turn it into a 5. Our scaling factor is 5, square root of 3, all divided by 2. All right. So we have our scaling factor. Uh, let's go ahead and find our other two missing sides, D and B. Uh, let's do B. That looks like it'd be a little bit easier first. So normally it has a side of 1. But we'll multiply it by our scaling factor over here, so 5 square root of 3 over 2. Nice simple multiplication there, 5 square root of 3 over 2. And then we have our missing side. On to D. D is normally a length of 2. And we'll multiply it by the scaling factor, so 5 square root of 3 all over 2. Uh, in this case, looks like the 2's cancel out. And we're just left with 5 square root of 3. So the special triangles really helped out a bunch uh, with figuring out uh, my missing sides. Let's try this one more time just to make sure that we know what we're doing. And also practice with another special triangle. So in this one, I'm looking for the value of A, B, C, and D. Uh, looks like we know a lot of right angles in here. So that's a right angle, that's a right angle. Looks like this is a right angle, and I have a 45 hiding in there. Um, let's see, uh, starting with the top triangle, if this is 90, that's 45, then this angle is 45. Now, the entire angle, if I go all the way to the other side, is 90, and if this little piece is 45, that means the rest of it is 45. So 245 uh, angles add up, and that'll give us our 90. Nice. Uh, now I'm looking at the much bigger triangle here. I have a 90, a 45, that means this has to be 45. So looks like we have a couple of 45, 45, 90 triangles uh, stuck together. Not bad. So let's go ahead and draw our little basic 45, 45, 90 over here. So let's see, the 90's in the corner. Uh, our common sides would be 1, 1 square root of 2, where our little angles are 45 over here. All right. So our side is not 1, 1, and uh, square root of 2. It has also been scaled up in sort of some sort of way. We can think of taking this original side of 1, multiplying it by a scaling factor, so we can figure out how it turned into 3. Well, this really just shows us that the scaling factor is 3, and now I can use that to figure out the rest of my sides. Let's go ahead and start with A. So A is this side right here. So it's normally 1, so I'm going to take 1, multiply it by our scaling factor, and now we know A is 3. B is this long side along the bottom, so it's normally the square root of 2. Multiply it by a scaling factor, 3 square root of 2. All right, not bad. Moving on, let's see what we got now. Um, let's go ahead and do C. So C is this side. It's the much bigger triangle. We have to figure out a new scaling factor. This one's a little bit different. So this 45, 45, 90 is uh, orientated like this. I have uh, my long side will make that square root of 2, short sides 1 and 1. 
So for this one, um, my original side was a length of one. We're gonna multiply it by a scaling factor. And it's gonna equal this new side here, which we found earlier, that's the three square root of two. So once again, I can see that my scaling factor is really just this new side, and I can use that to figure out my other values. Right, let's go ahead and do C. So C is over here. Normally it has a length of one, but we're gonna multiply it by this scaling factor. So three square root of two, three square root two. And one last one, side D. Normally a length of square root of two, multiply. So three square root of two. Let's see what we get. So three times the square root of two times the square root of two is just three times two or six. Not bad. And now we have all of our sides and all of our angles. So the more relationships you know, uh, the easier this process will get. Um, and if you are struggling with this, maybe go back and, and brush up on some of those earlier relationships um, and, and that'll help out a bunch. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.